Hi, Jason Canal at GQ Barbecue. Do you like meat church rubs? Do you also like spare ribs? If so, then you're going to love today's video because we're going to make honey hog spare ribs. If you want to see how we do that, it's coming up right now. Here at GQ Barbecue, we are all about the grilling and chilling lifestyle. If that's something that interests you, smash down that subscription button, hit that bell notification, and you won't miss any of our videos. So the inspiration for today's video comes from me wanting to try another one of Meat Church's rubs. I recently did a prime rib using his holy cow rub, and holy cow was it good. If you want to see that video, go ahead and click that i card up above. Today I'm going to use a rub that I've never used before. It's Meat Church's Honey Hog. Honey Hog has plenty of sugar, dehydrated honey, some paprika, granulated garlic, onion, celery. No doubt this is going to taste excellent on these ribs. So for today's cook, we're going to be using the slow and sear on the Weber kettle. What I'm targeting is a 275 degree temperature. I tend to find that ribs cook best at that temperature, but that's just my own personal opinion. In order to get the Weber kettle up to the proper temp, we're going to go ahead and get 12 briquettes going. We're going to use this fire starter. Once those are nice and hot, I'm going to fill up the rest of the slow and sear with charcoal briquettes. I'm then going to use a hickory strip right on top so we get that good smoke flavor. I'm going to monitor the temperature since I have no idea what the actual temperature is since I don't have one of those fancy gadgets that will tell me. What I do have is a little $5 oven thermometer from Walmart, which works just as well in my opinion and I'll show you why I think so. I'll just put that on the grate right over here and I will monitor the temperature using the dials up top. If I want to increase the temperature, I'll open it up more and if I want to lower the temperature, I'll close it some. But we're going to start out about halfway, uh, leaving the, the top one halfway open and leaving the bottom one about halfway open. I also filled up the water reservoir here on the slow and sear with water. That's going to help keep a nice moist environment inside the kettle. And I'm a big believer that smoke sticks to moisture. That's how you get that good smoky flavor. So having a good moist environment in this Weber kettle is important and the water reservoir on the slow and sear helps us achieve that. So what we got today is a beautiful rack of spare ribs. The membrane has already been removed off the back. I'm a big fan of removing the membrane every single time. By doing so, it's gonna allow the rub to penetrate down into the meat and get you better overall flavor. It also is gonna make for a much more tender rib when you bite into the meat of the bones that have the membrane removed on them. If you need to remove the membrane, use the dull end of the knife, stick it underneath, lift it up, and then pull it off with a napkin. So these ribs are ready for the honey hog. We're gonna go over them with a light to medium coat on the back end. We're gonna coat the front end. Game I like to always play as I'm rubbing the meat is I like to see how accurate I can be. If you do miss and some rub goes to the side, take your rack and just go like this. So we want to get all parts seasoned up. If you have some of the ribs that didn't get rub on it, left over from the sides, then just apply more. Cook time on these ribs should take somewhere between three and a half to a little over four hours. Beautiful. So these ribs have been cooking for about four hours. Couple different ways to check for doneness. Uh, the easiest and best way is just to take a toothpick, push a toothpick down into the meat. This toothpick is going into the meat very easily, very tender meat. It's just the way I like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and call these guys done. We can remove them right now and eat dry rub ribs and give them another coat of the honey hog, which I think would be great, or now is a good time to sauce them. I actually like saucing them and leaving them on the pit for a good 10 or 15 minutes to allow that sauce to really set up onto the meat. Since we used a sweet rub, I'm gonna go ahead and use a savory and spicy barbecue sauce. Today I'm using GQ Hottish. The only thing I wouldn't use right here is another sweet sauce. You don't want to layer sweet on sweet, layer sweet on savory. So 
So now that the sauce is on the ribs, I'm gonna go ahead and let those sit and cook for another 10 or 15 minutes just to let that sauce set up on the ribs and give another layer of flavor. So it's been about 12 minutes. We added a log too, just to kind of get that kiss of smoke up on the sauce as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove these over to the cutting board so we can cut them. Nice and delicate. I can tell these are gonna cut nicely. Look at that good bone pullback, the color between the hottish and the honey hog. These are some beautiful ribs. I love this bend that I'm getting. It lets me know that they're cooked very well done. I love the color all around. Uh, I like to cut them by turning them upside down and finding the space in between the bone and the meat. Beautiful, beautiful rib right there. Perfect bite, came off very clean. If cooking with live fire is your thing, then go ahead and click on my face to subscribe to our channel. Also, my friend Bill reveals his world champion rib recipe. If you want to see that, go ahead and click on his video down below. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, Jason Ganahl, GQ Barbecue.